where we'll next spend a few short videos talking about the transpose of a matrix. In this video, I will give you the definition of the transpose, and I will also give you a glimpse into why the transpose will play such a major role later on in the course. So let's start with a definition. There are actually several ways to look at the transpose. Perhaps the simplest way to describe it as an operation that turns the rows of a matrix into the columns of the resulting matrix. So here we have a matrix whose rows are 1, 2, 3, and 4, 5, 6. So the resulting matrix, the transpose of this one, has columns 1, 2, 3, and 4, 5, 6. If we call this the matrix A, then this is called the matrix A transpose. So rather than saying the transpose of A, you say A transpose, just like you commonly say A inverse. So this is A transpose. So if the original matrix was M by N, then the new matrix, its transpose, has dimensions N by M. So the transpose reverses the dimensions. In particular, this matrix was 2 by 3, so the resulting matrix, its transpose, is 3 by 2. And of course, under the transpose, a square matrix becomes once again a square matrix. The transpose of a square matrix is another square matrix. There's another way to think of the transpose. You can think of it as a kind of reflection. Just imagine a two-sided mirror, a mirror with two reflecting sides, that points at the 45 degree angle like this, like my hand does, along the main diagonal. And by looking in the mirror, you can see where every number ends up in the transpose. So for example, this 4 will appear right here. And here it is in position 1, 2. Right? So every, any element in position A, B ends up being in the position B, A. So it's, once again, reflection with respect to the main diagonal. And of course, all of the entries on the main diagonal itself remain put. They stay put. They stay right where they are. So the main diagonal of this matrix, it's not the full main diagonal, partial, has entries 1 and 5. And of course the transpose once again has the entries 1 and 5 on the diagonal. So that's the transpose. And on the surface of it, it seems like a pretty silly operation. At the very least, it doesn't follow naturally from any of the linear algebra concepts that we have encountered so far. And that would actually be a very valid comment. So for now, we're only discussing the transpose with an eye towards the future. And in the future, we'll consider the following operation that can be very naturally expressed via the transpose and actually cannot be expressed without the transpose. So consider two elements from R3. Let's call them alpha and beta. And suppose that alpha consists of the entries alpha 1, alpha 2, and alpha 3. And beta, you guessed it, consists of the entries beta 1, beta 2, and beta 3. Later on in the course, and especially when we're talking about the inner product, we will consider what we'll initially call the dot product. And it'll be defined for two vectors, alpha and beta, from, in this case, R3, and the result will be a single number that equals alpha 1, beta 1, plus alpha 2, beta 2, please let me have space, yes, just barely, plus alpha 3, beta 3. So this will be called the dot product, or one of the dot products, of the two vectors from R3, alpha and beta. And the question is, how would you express this concept, which will prove extraordinarily useful in the language of matrices. And it's really cannot be done without the transpose. And it is very easy to do with the operation of the transpose. And it will simply be expressed as alpha transpose beta, or equivalently, beta transpose alpha. Well, let's make sure of that right here. Let me write on the board in matrix form, what alpha transpose beta looks like. I will actually erase all of this and write in alpha transpose. Well, what is alpha transpose? Well, alpha is a single column 
consisting of the entries alpha 1, alpha 2, and alpha 3. So it will become a single row consisting of the entries alpha 1, alpha 2, and alpha 3. As I'm saying this, I realized that I forgot to mention this yet another interpretation of the transpose. The original definition was that it's a transformation operation that turns rows into columns, but you can also think of it as an operation that turns columns into rows. Let's look at the columns of this matrix. 1, 4, 2, 5, 3, 6. And now let's look at the rows of its transpose. 1, 4, 2, 5, 3, 6. So when we looked at alpha, which was alpha 1, alpha 2, alpha 3 in a single column, the transpose of this matrix is alpha 1, alpha 2, alpha 3 in a single row. And what's the result of this matrix product? Well, of course, it's the 1 by 1 matrix that equals by the dot product perspective. So it's not surprising that this is also called the dot product. And that's the sense in which we'll use the dot product until we actually get to the inner product. Okay, so the result will of course be this, excuse me, this combination right here. It will be one by one matrix with this value in it. Alpha one, beta one, plus alpha two, beta two, plus alpha three, beta three. So the result is a one by one matrix. And of course you can uh, mentally identify one by one matrices with simple numbers. So there you go. This very useful concept is very naturally captured by matrix expression when using the transpose. And this is the key to the importance of the operation of the transpose. So that's the definition and a glimpse into its future importance. So what we're going to do in the next video is consider the transpose of a product of two matrices. Just like previously, we considered the inverse of a product of two invertible matrices and concluded that that inverse equals the product of the individual inverses in the reverse order. So our goal in the next video will be to find out whether the transpose of a product can be expressed in terms of the individual transposes. So it's a great question to think about before you watch the next video.